Now I'd like to show you how you can acquire streaming video from your webcam and then process images in real time inside the acquisition loop. Here I have my webcam attached to the USB port on my Rio. Let's begin with an empty project. Take a look at main.vi. Let's look at the block diagram and front panel at the same time. Look under vision and motion. And I'll begin with iMac DX. The main VIs here are grab and configure grab. Begin by creating a constant for the session in. This shows a list of all of the connected cameras. Cam zero is the default. I'm gonna change this to a control temporarily. Same idea here, you can Click that and it shows you a list of all the available cameras. You can have multiple cameras connected with a USB hub. I'll change this back to a constant. Here we have iMac DX Grab. This is the main VI that goes inside a while loop eventually. I'll connect the session out of configure grab to session in of grab. Grab also needs access to an image buffer. I'll get into Vision Utilities, Image Management, and then iMac Create. This creates a reference to some memory that's been allocated for the video buffer. I'll title this M0 and connect the output into Image In. Image Out eventually needs to go to a front panel indicator. I'll look under Vision and I will go ahead and use Image Display Silver Edition. I'm going to tidy this up just a little bit since I won't be using the ROI tools. Let me right click. Let me right click and choose Visible Items, ROI Tools, and then make those hidden. Also going to resize this image info bar at the bottom. Connect that display to the image out. Now, as I said earlier, image grab needs to go inside a while loop. I'll create the stop button. All right, let's see how we're doing. Go ahead and run. I'm waiting a little bit, not seeing anything. Oh, hit stop and there you see something. Well, turns out that image actually no needs to go inside the while loop. Let's try that again. Which makes sense if we're trying to update the image as the images are arriving. We want that indicator to be inside the loop. And this works pretty good. Pan the camera back and forth. And definitely can see that the front panel indicator is updating. Now I'd like to start getting some processing going on inside this loop. Clear a bit of room here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to color utilities and then extract color planes. I'll be using this to extract the luma or gray level image from this color image. We see a number of different inputs and in particular I want to use this blue or luma plane input and here's where we can extract the gray level image as an output. Image source expects the color image, and then I need to provide a reference to an image image buffer in a similar way as we did for grab. Create a duplicate of that. Give it a unique name, M1. And this image reference needs to connect to the plane that we are trying to extract. And I, I'm trying to get the Luma plane. Let me copy this image display, rename the first one to webcam. So I always want to be looking at what the webcam sees directly. Then the processed image will appear here on the right side. Go 
good to rearrange things just a little bit so that way I can do the tile format and we can see the input on the top processed image on the bottom. I get the processed image looking at the Luma plane. Try running this and see how we're doing. Now it definitely looks black and white, but you also notice that it seems a little more grainy than the first. Turns out that at the moment I'm extracting the blue plane. So I'll create a constant and select Hue, Saturation, and Luma mode instead, HSL. Try this again. We should be picking out the Luma plane at this point. And Luma will have the same resolution as the original. Okay, that looks better. Not quite so grainy looking. Now that I've got the gray level image extracted, let's do some edge detection. Look under Image Processing, look under Filters, and here I have the Canny Edge Detector. I'll get that in between the gray level or Luma image and the image display. All right, that seems straightforward. Let's try running this and see what happens. Forgot that we need to have some control of the filter parameters. I'll create a front panel control. Let me rearrange the front panel display here just a moment. All right, now we can adjust that in real time as well, again, because we see that it's inside the while loop. All right, lots and lots of edges being detected at the moment. And again, you can see this is all happening in real time. Use a higher threshold number to reduce the clutter. Now, if you look carefully at the processed image, you note that sometimes we see the gray level image sneaking in there. Most of the time it's the edge detected version. Let's see if we can make this happen again. Well, keep keep looking at that processed image. Oh, there it's doing it. There it's doing it quite a bit. Trouble here is the edge detector really needs its own destination image for processing purposes. It seemed like we were getting by without that, but looks like we definitely need another one of these. So let me again copy this one, give it its unique name. I'll call that M2. And this image reference needs to connect directly to the edge detector. Make sure everything still works. Okay, that all looks reasonable. All right, let me start working on a little bit of extra embellishments here to take care of some cleanup operations when the VI is stopped. First one has to do with all of the memory that's been allocated by the various calls to iMac create. I'm going to come back to Vision Utilities, Image Management, and there's the complementary iMac Dispose. This undoes the operation of iMac create. You can do it on an individual image basis if you use that image reference, or if you create the true constant, then it will dispose of all of the images that were ever created previously. So eventually I want to move iMac Dispose to the end of processing when we break out of that while loop. Before I do that, I also want to properly close the reference or the session to, uh, session reference to the camera. iMac configure grab opened a session. Grab continues to use that session. And then we want to do a proper shutdown at the end. I need to connect 
this session wire or the original cam zero session constant, I want to connect that up to the session in of iMac DX closed camera. Continue propagating the air cluster. And the very last step then is iMac dispose. Wrap that up with simple air handler. And at this point, we've got a complete application. Let's do one last run just to make sure everything's still working properly. Try panning the camera back and forth a little bit. All right, this all looks good. Hopefully you have a better idea of how you can set up a real-time video processor.